Oh, excuse me, I have to burp. Hey, my name is Eric, and 11 months ago, I quit my job to fulfill a 20 plus year dream of traveling the country for one year. I left Florida in November of 2021, and today it is October of 2022. In 11 months, I've journeyed through 24 states and just over 29,000 miles. And I did it all in my teardrop trailer. Originally, when I planned to set out and do this for one year of traveling around the country, I was gonna do it all in my Subaru Forester. I was gonna do a build out, I was gonna sleep in there, I was gonna have all my food in there, I was gonna have all my clothes in there, everything. I was gonna do the whole journey just in my car. But at the last minute, about four months before I decided to hit the road, I decided, you know what? It'd probably be more accommodating if I actually had something proper to actually sleep in, something a little bit warmer when it got cold, and a much better way to cook. And so, I bought a teardrop trailer. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you the pros and the cons of traveling in a teardrop trailer full time. Well, first off, probably the best part about owning a teardrop as compared to say another type of rig style is that I have no black tanks and no gray tanks on this. All right, so what's a black tank and what's a gray tank? Good question. Uh, a gray tank usually is things like your shower water or sink water. If you have a bigger setup and you're able to have say a shower or a sink inside where you can do dishes and, and, and cook and things like that, you usually have a holding tank down on the bottom part of the trailer and that usually is considered gray water. Now another type of tank you might have on a trailer is something called a black tank. And a black tank goes directly to your toilet. And I don't think I have to explain how messy that probably is to empty. So I'm really glad I don't have either of those. Another great benefit of not having black tanks or gray tanks is that I don't have to mess with dump stations. A dump station is the proper place to empty a gray tank or a black tank if your rig has those things. But a dump station usually costs about $10 from what I've seen, so that adds up pretty quickly. And well, not only do I get to save $10, but I just don't have to mess with them. Another pro about having a teardrop trailer as compared to other kind of travel setups is that this is much smaller and a lot easier for me to navigate, say, around a big city somewhere than compared to something like a fifth wheel or maybe a Class A or a Class C. Also, I can get this down trail roads that I just probably couldn't take a Class A or a Class C. Personally, when I find a place to sleep for the night, I like to find really more dispersed camping spots. I don't do established campgrounds and I really don't like to be around other people. I like my peace and I like my quiet. So I like to find more remote places to sleep, kind of like this for the night. Um, if I was in a bigger travel setup, say a big fifth wheel or anything else, I don't think I would have been able to pull it into this spot. This is kind of a little bit smaller spot. So the teardrop allows me to get into a little bit more remote places and quite honestly, just kind of off the grid a lot more. All right, real quick, I mentioned things like Class A and Class C. And if you've never owned a trailer or have never done any kind of research on them, you may be wondering what the hell does that mean, right? So here's a quick breakdown of the different types of trailers you can look into. A Class A is your big motorhome or big rig as they call it. A Class A is what you see like say a, a band touring in or say uh, a whole family might be wanting to travel in. It gives you tons of space. It has a whole living room. They usually have a full kitchen inside with an oven and a little island prep area. They sometimes have dishwashers, washing machines. They have what's called slide outs, which means the whole side of the trailer will slide out to give you more room inside. I've seen them have fireplaces inside. It's crazy. A Class A will also by far set you back the most. I've seen them cost easily six figures. Now a Class C is more like a U-Haul. That's the easiest way to explain it. It's like a Class A, you have an actual motor and a place that you drive in it, um, and then everything's self-contained. You have the bed inside and things. There's usually a full bathroom, just like a Class A would have, but they're just much smaller. I have seen an entire family traveling in a Class C, and like a Class A, it can have things like slide outs to give you more space inside, but it usually lacks things like an entire kitchen. It usually won't have things like a oven or um, maybe uh, a big, or maybe a big living room area with a big leather couch that Class A's also have inside of them. Now I skip B class and that's for a good reason. If you look at a chart of all the different types of travel setups out there, there's Class A, Class B, Class C, but Class A is a big kind of setup, Class C is another kind of big setup, and then Class B right in the middle is a smaller setup, and those are vans. So a van is usually a Class B, usually a conversion van. So something you can also travel full time in. It might have a shower inside, it uh, might have a sink inside, um, it definitely has a bed and things like that. 
but obviously it's a van. It's much, much smaller than say a Class C or Class A. So that's a Class B. All right, another pro about owning a teardrop trailer as compared to say a big fifth wheel or anything is they're very lightweight. My teardrop weighs a thousand pounds dry. Dry weight simply means the weight of the trailer as it's coming out of the factory. So before you put anything in it, before you fill up your water tanks, if you have water tanks, before you put any personal items like clothes or a bed inside, before you put any pots and pans, cooking stuff, before you put yourself inside to sleep for the night, dry weight is everything that rolled off this factory floor. So the dry weight on my trailer is a thousand pounds, which means I can pull it very easily with my Subaru Forester. And that's the great thing about a lot of teardrops is they're very lightweight. You can pull them with almost anything. There's teardrops out there that are actually are made for motorcycles. They weigh literally just a few hundred pounds. Now it won't be as much uh, as what mine has. It won't have a cooking setup like a galley area and it's just gonna be a bed inside. But if you're traveling for a really long time and you're traveling in a small car and you don't really wanna do the tent thing and don't wanna pay for hotels every night, then a teardrop is a great way to tow up behind almost any kind of car. So you can see how tall I am as compared to my teardrop. I obviously am taller than that. And that's the great thing about the teardrop is it's very, very small. It fits in almost any garage. So even though I'm full-time on the road, I've been traveling for 11 months, a lot of people who own teardrops are not full-time travelers. They may take it out for the weekend or maybe for a week and they go visit a national park somewhere. But in that time that they go between their trips, they need to park their teardrop somewhere so they can just park it inside of a garage. So that's another great thing about the teardrop is it's just so small, I can take it almost anywhere. And a lot of owners love that they can park it anywhere. Now this last pro may not be much of a pro to a lot of people, but for me, it's perfect. Minimalism. The teardrop makes me go minimal. I can't own a lot of things because, well, I don't have any space to put it. I've actually been places where they've tried to give me, say, a souvenir, and I've literally said to them, I can't take that. I literally have no place to put that. I personally love just more of a minimal style. I like just having what I need with me. I don't need a lot of extra things. I really don't need a lot of extra room or anything. I just wanted a nice, quiet, easy place that I can pull off the side of the road when I'm traveling, crawl in here for the night, and go to sleep. I have in here what I need, which is my clothes and my bed. And it gives me a place to hang out in the night when it's maybe really cold or raining. And I'll just watch a movie or something like that on my phone before I go to sleep. All right, and last but not least, the whole thing I love about the teardrop really is that it makes me be outside. I can't just hang out inside that thing. Look at it. <laughs> it's just a bed on wheels and a place to cook outside, but it's outside when I cook. So I love that it really makes me just get outside and be in nature. And that's what I hit the road for. I did a one year journey across the country to see the country, not to be locked up inside where I'm watching TV or something. That's just not me. I like to be outside, be active. I like to go on hikes and just explore an area and see what this country really has to offer. But as they say, every rose has its thorns and every pro has its cons and the teardrop definitely has its cons. Well, the first con about the teardrop actually fell on my pros list as well. And that is everything I do has to be outside. Cooking is outside. Some, I have to shower outside. I have to poop outside. Everything I do is outside, which is fine on a day like today. It's really nice out, but when it's windy, when it's raining, when it's cold, trying to cook your dinner when it's snowing, it's not a lot of fun. I've had to do it several times. And when I'm on the road and I need a shower, I either use my road shower or I go to a Planet Fitness. Well, I can't use my road shower right now because mm, actually last night it got down to 35 degrees and the night before that it got down to 30 degrees. So it's way too cold for me to use my road shower right now. And I'm nowhere near a Planet Fitness. So I'm gonna have to go a couple days without a shower. Now, if I had say a bigger setup like a fifth wheel or a class A or a class C or whatever, that had a shower inside, then yeah, I could shower every day if I wanted to. That'd be pretty nice. Another negative about owning such a small home is it's really hard to stand up in it. All right, imagine trying to put on your pants every single day when you're six feet tall and you're trying to do it in a room that's only four and a half feet tall. Yeah, it kind of sucks. And that is one of the bigger drawbacks for me personally of the teardrop is that I really just can't get in there and stand up and stretch out. If it's a really crappy day outside and the weather's really bad, it's raining a lot or snowing or whatever, and I can't do any hiking and there's nothing else to really go and do in the area that I can do inside, and I'm kind of forced to hang out inside the trailer, 
Well, I just kind of have to sit there and watch some movies on my phone or get on the computer and do some editing or something like that. But I'm doing it all sitting down, which means your legs get cramped up and it can get pretty uncomfortable at times. There's no chair or anything to go sit in. A lot of your bigger setups like a Class A or a Class C or a fifth wheel or something like that will have couches and chairs and you can sit down more comfortably. And if you had to hang out in there all day because of the weather or something, well, you can do it a lot more comfortably than you can with this thing. Now this next one is probably a big con for a lot of people, but for me personally, it's not the biggest con out there. And that is, there is no bathroom in this thing. Now I've done an entire video of how I handle nature when it calls, but the quick rundown is, I have a pee bottle and I have a portable camping toilet. I get it, I get it. Not having a personal bathroom inside of your setup is, well, doesn't give you the privacy that most would probably want. I understand that. Being a guy, it's a lot easier for me to go out in nature and do my business. And quite honestly, I drive enough through cities that if I need to, I just pull over and find a gas station or something to go to as well. Now this next con is really geared more towards this particular model than really all teardrops as a collective. But my teardrop was not intended for full-time travel use. As I mentioned, I've been on the road for 11 months now and I've really put this thing through the ringer. This particular model is a 2012 Little Guy 6 wide. It's called 6 wide because it's 6 feet wide. This one's made of wood. More up-to-date models are made of fiberglass. They're a lot better to handle things like moisture and water. There's companies out there like the Escapod that make ones for long-term use and more off-road use. This particular model was really made more for, say, a weekend warrior or doing, say, a week trip to, like, say, a national park or something like that here and there. And then every few months you do a trip, but in the rest of the time it's really just parked safely in your garage. I've taken this down plenty of bumpy roads and washboard roads, pothole roads. I've cracked an axle on it before because I hit a pothole and I had to replace the axle. I've had more cosmetic things come loose because of the jiggling around that the trailer will do on, say, a washboard road or something like that. That the more up-to-date modern models just probably would handle a lot better. This one doesn't get too bad on a cold night. I'd be lying if I didn't say it didn't get to around 35, 40 degrees in there before though. But you bundle up really good when you sleep. So the way I personally sleep is I have a 35 degree bag. I have a fleece liner inside of that. Then I sleep in a sweatshirt, flannel pants. Uh, I have wool socks. I'll put my hoodie up over my head to make it a little bit more comfortable. My sleeping bag also is a mummy style sleeping bag, so it has its own hood, so I'll pull that over on a really cold night. But yeah, it can get kind of chilly in there. If I really need to warm things up, I do have a Mr. Buddy heater, and I'll turn that on for a little bit in there, but I can't run it real long. It's a propane heater, and well, propane can kill you. All right, and last but not least, for me personally, one of the bigger cons about owning a teardrop trailer and traveling across the entire country for a year is that it's a lot harder to stealth camp in that than it would be in say just my car or if I lived in a van or anything like that. All right, what is stealth camping? Stealth camping is when you need to stay the night in a city as compared to say out in nature somewhere like this. When you're stealth camping, you're just going into a city to sleep for the night. You're not getting out there and starting a bonfire and pulling out a guitar and singing Kumbaya and hanging outside your rig. You just go find a nice quiet street somewhere usually a nice quiet neighborhood in between some houses or a nice closed business uh, park area. I've slept behind a couple of businesses for the night when I travel through a city and need to sleep for the night. Maybe it's behind a Planet Fitness or a lot of people say they sleep at a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel, which I don't personally do, but you can do that. That's called stealth camping. Usually in a stealth camping scenario, you're getting in under the cover of darkness and you're leaving early in the morning. So you stealth in and you stealth out. That's the idea. You get into your rig, you stay there for the night, you're not making a big scene, you don't need the cops called on you or anything like that. You're just looking for a nice, quiet, safe place to sleep for the night. And the reality is when you travel full time across the United States, that's just gonna happen. You're not always gonna be in a nice, remote, quiet place. In fact, you can probably hear it a little bit right now, there's actually a road not too far from me. I'm actually just sleeping at a trailhead tonight. And that happens when you're traveling across the country. There's a lot of cities to go check out and a lot of interesting things in those cities to go check out. All right, well, that's my pros and cons about traveling full-time in a teardrop trailer. What are your pros and cons about your travel setup if you're a full-time traveler? Let me know in the comments below. And again, thank you for escaping normal life with me.